She's a she's here to offset Ryan. Or she, 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 like, I may say something nice and she might troll. She never control. I'm on it. <laughs> Hernandez. Yeah. I'm ready. Except for Marianne and Don Luxo. Does the mobile website yeah. support me? <laughs> no, I was going to be like, I'm going to have snuggle on people so that I can hear you. Know, Why is it so cold? <laughs> Why is it so cold? No, it is. It, I can hear Hello? Yep. Testing, it's testing. On. Is that better? You can see it. How much better? Can you hear me in the back? Can you hear me now? Is that okay? Can people hear in the back? Okay, I think we're good. All right, I guess we'll get started. Um, hi, I'm Mariana. Um, I'm the outgoing product manager for the mobile web team. Um, and this is John Robson. Hello, I'm the um, front end developer for Mega Web, the one of the front end developers. Um, so we're going to talk about the Wikipedia mobile site today. Um, which is the project uh, with the .m attached to it. Um, so if your wiki project is English Wikipedia, that would be en.m.wikipedia.org. Um, and what I'd like to talk about is um, why we have a mobile site, what the purpose of the mobile site is, because um, you know it's not a requirement of um, any website to have a mobile site specifically. Some, some sites just kind of responsibly scale down and, and get smaller. Um, and that's not quite how we approached uh, mobile development. So I'm um, just going to talk about the mobile site, why we have it, um, what kinds of things it's been really useful for, for us. Um, so this, uh, you're looking at pictures of the entire mobile team, um, I believe. Oh, just, well, just mobile web. Um, and some of them are in the audience today, so if you have more questions about mobile development or design, please feel free to talk to them. They're all scattered about here. We love questions. Uh, so, um, the genesis of desktop. Um, just to give some background on mobile and its context within desktop, uh, I wanted to talk about how the desktop site came about, um, how some of its features sort of were developed over time. Um, so, desktop was, um, if you're familiar with um, the essay or book, um, The Bazaar and the Cathedral, uh, you know that there's kind of two models of open source software development. Um, the bazaar is this organic, buzzing kind of hive with lots of different stalls and corners and nooks and crannies. And the cathedral is this one kind of centralized, hierarchical, planned place. Um, and obviously, as if you're all Wikipedians, you know which model Wikipedia has followed. Um, it's been very much a bazaar. Uh, this thing just meant to kind of encapsulate that. So, the great thing about the bazaar model is that everyone can feel empowered to participate in creating new features for the site, right? Um, the not so great thing about it is that there are tons of competing standards. There's no kind of one um, rule book to follow. Um, and that it's, since people are working in stalls, isolated little corners and pockets, there's a lot of redundancy that happens. So features get built um, that are pretty similar to each other. Um, and all of this kind of grows and grows and grows and expands without any kind of check um, or reigning in process. So if you are creating features, it's easier to just create something new on top of whatever existed before than it is to kind of remove the, the older stuff. Um, a good example of this is the sidebar on Wikipedia. So if you, if you look at the sidebar, there's tons of links to every imaginable kind of content, right? There's the portal, um, community portal, there's a bunch of tools in the toolbox, um, and they're kind of stuck there in a, in a haphazard fashion, uh, and it's not it's not actually very clear why uh, any of those things uh, are in the sidebar as opposed to any other thing. Um, and this kind of uh, accumulation of stuff is, is sort of how we, we see Wikipedia today. So yeah, mobile was very, very different. Um, so the first thing we had to do was clean up the reader experience. Um, what we found was um, Lots of things were optimized for larger screens, so there's a lot of styles that were with fixed widths, which just would look really cramped on a mobile screen. Um, another really good example is cleanup templates. Um, so one of the things we had to do early on was clean up cleanup templates. So if you're familiar with cleanup templates, they're essentially like a little box at the top of the page, um, encouraging you to edit the page and suggesting what you might do to do that. 
Um, what we see on some articles was that's all used to assume when they read an article. So let's see an article about something, and there'd be like six cleanup templates before they could get to the content. Um, so this is very confusing. So one of the things we just did with that was we collapsed it, um, so it was still there, but they were less visible, less common. Um, we had to do various other things. We had special case home pages, which is still ongoing. Some wiki projects still don't have a opt mobile optimized home page. Um, this is mostly because they tend to use um, two column layouts. Um, we had to rewrite inline styles and portal pages using scripts. It's horrible. Um, and there's still many, many pages that are still not optimized for mobile. Village pump, for instance, recent changes, history pages, any page which has a huge table, the list goes on. Um, so when we started building our wooden horse, which is the mobile optimized skin, we had to start small by filtering all this stuff. Um, just because they look broken. Um, so we actually reset a lot of things. We did something really controversial, which was we turned off gadgets, we turned off JavaScript models, we turned off CSS, we turned off the sidebar, we like, removed the table contents. Um, and the reason we did this was we wanted to just rethink them. Um, some of the gadgets were not tested on mobile at all. Some of them relied on things that don't exist on mobile. For instance, um, if you hover over an uh, element, um, there's no concept of hover in mobile. Um, so all this stuff needs to be rethought. Um, we, the good news is we did the majority of this, so we're able to focus more on country features. Um, so in 2012, our goal was to get 1,000 unique photo uploads per month, which we did. Um, and this year, it's much more, much more generic. Um, the goal is to get 6,000 unique country users per month. So that includes uploaders, that includes um, people making spelling mistake, uh, spelling mistake corrections. Um, Potentially, it could be adding an allocation to an article, the list goes on. Um, so the other thing we did with mobile was, um, so to build these features, um, we took a completely different approach from the bizarre model. Um, so the problem with desktop is we don't tend to citation need our own features. We citation need our articles, but not features. Um, so you'll see like a few citation needed stickers around the room if you want your laptop, just to remind you. Um, so one of the teams in the Wikimedia Foundation built something called event logging. Um, and the purpose of this was to capture um, bugs and, um, and issues with workflows that users were experiencing. Um, and this has been really useful for mobile. We've, we've used this for a lot of our decisions. So one example is the editing interface we pushed out recently. Um, the first version had, a, um, had some buttons to allow you to go back and forth um, between sections. Um, when we looked at the data, we were seeing people getting very confused by this. There's a lot of people tapping that button to get to the next section, the previous section, but they weren't actually saving the edit. So it wasn't actually a useful feature. So we actually removed that as a result of um, Another thing we've done is we've used something, we used a website called usertesting.com. Um, so what this allows you to do is it allows you to um, create a script, send it out to a load of users, and crowdsource um, how they perform that task. Uh, this has been really enlightening. Um, for instance, like on one video, someone, someone un unrelated to the task noticed um, a talk icon. And they said, oh, I didn't know there was such in type pages. I guess that's a beta feature. This is a feature that's been on desktop for a long, long time, and people are still not aware of it. Um, so let's look at another uh, let's look at an example, the watch list. Um, so this is a quote from a, a very a super user, a super old Wikipedia, who is Kellogg. Um, and they say that the watch list is for editors. There's no way um, a reader will use it as a bookmarking feature. Um, so citation needed. Um, so we used event login to check this. Um, so my question is, what do you think the average edit count of a user uh, of the watch list is on mobile? Zero, because you deliver it to every reader. Well, like the feature. Really yeah, but you gave the watch list start to every user. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, so if you look at if you look at the data, if you look at what people are actually watching on mobile, this is the top ten watched articles on Wikipedia, English Wikipedia. And it reads a bit like um, like like the search result list. Um, this is the sort of things people really search for on Google, um, not watched. There's uh, a few things that I imagine might be watched by um, editors, for instance, like I imagine a lot of Justin Bieber. Um, um, vandalism. Um, so still, it's kind of uncanny. And if you look at the same list with Chinese Wikipedia, there's a lot of like Korean pop bands. A lot of Korean pop bands. It's like, yeah, it's 
list of pornography actors? And list of pornography actors. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if you look at mobile, 78.7% um, of unique users with an edit count of zero are watching 4.2 pages. And this is in line with super users um, who are watching a similar amount of pages, but they're much, much smaller. Um, so newbies are actually the most um, avid users that watch this feature on mobile, which is surprising. So as, as Stephen was saying, uh, we do show these features to all users. However, you can't actually use them until you log in or create an account. So everything on mobile is gated to login. Um, and the way that we got a bunch of uh, new users onto mobile was um, we would show them things like the watch list star or uh, the upload button. And when they tapped it, they would just get a little call to action like you're seeing here to uh, log in or create an account. Um, and in doing so, we actually managed to increase the number of registrations across all projects, um, all Wikipedia projects, by quite a bit. Um, so that's really exciting for us. Um, we've seen a pretty steady year-over-year -year decline in new account creations for the past couple of years. Uh, and we're actually we're starting to pull back on that um, and get those numbers back up. Hmm. So there's a bunch of numbers on the slide, I won't walk through all of them, but the, the basic gist is lots of people are signing up from different features, um, from the upload feature, from the watch list star, um, and then just from the generic login uh, in, in the navigation um, And so pretty recently we released the editing feature, uh, which blew all of those other things out of the water. Um, tons and tons of new users signed up uh, on mobile just to access the editing feature. Um, and they went on to make their very first edit. So that for us was a hugely exciting um, moment in our team history. Um, you can see that, you know, first there was nothing and then there was a huge spike. Um, so the good news is that it looks like a pretty sustained um, number of users are editing on mobile. Um, and this is just a graph of people making their very first contribution um, on the mobile site. So users with an edit count of zero making an edit uh, on mobile. Um, that's really huge. It's about 200 a day. Uh, and I think, generally speaking, what we uh, learned is that data is very valuable in challenging assumptions. Um, so our assumption before we started work on editing was that it would just be too hard. People wouldn't want to edit on a tiny screen. It would just be too much of a pain. Uh, but there are uh, cameras on phones, and people love taking pictures on phones. So we figured maybe mobile will really just be an upload vector. Like maybe that's all we can really ask of people to do on mobile, um, is to contribute images to comments. Um, so we made it really easy to upload photos uh, from your mobile phone um, to the mobile site um, or to apps. Um, and we did, we saw a huge number of uh, new users uploading photos. Um, unfortunately, many of these photos uh, are what we like to call selfies. Um, so I want to point out here that it's not a malicious contribution. Um, we were afraid that there would, there would be much worse things uploaded by mobile, but um, actually the vast majority were just people taking photos of themselves. Um, and it could just be, you know, um, I, I'm new to a site, I think that this is how I fill out my profile. Or it could be, uh, I want to get my picture on Wikipedia because it's a big site and everybody reads it. Um, but uh, yeah, we call it the Sylvie Apocalypse. So, um, we were very quickly able to see that this was not something we wanted to keep um, promoting. Um, so we stopped displaying the upload button for uh, logged out users, and that actually led to a dramatic decrease in deletions. So you're seeing the big spike there in April. It was all from just one week of showing uh, the upload feature to logged out readers. Um, and after we disabled it, the number of files deleted um, from that batch uh, just went down significantly. So um, data really helps us, uh, guides us, and, and we try to do everything um, in a, as much of a data-informed environment as possible. Um, so I think this could potentially be a great lesson for desktop, too. Um, and I think we have shown some success with experimenting with showing the features to logged out users, and I think that the desktop site could certainly do that as well. Um, and I know that the E3 team is considering running experiments um, showing things like the Watch the Star to readers um, and getting them to create an account um, on Wikipedia to use it. Um, also, streamlining and simplifying features is always a great idea. Um, you know, we took a, a photo upload process which involved going to a completely different project, uploading a file, going back to your home wiki, 
copy pasting some markup and putting it into the article, uh, we turned that into a, basically a one-step upload process. Um, and even though, you know, yes, that led to an uh, increase in selfies, um, I think it's just a generally good principle to have um, that we should make things as simple to use as possible in all our projects. And I know that the visual editor team is um, working on that uh, kind of photo upload process as well. Um, and of course, finally, everything. Please measure everything that you do. Um, and we actually, we have a lot of resources now that, that let even volunteers um, kind of measure effects. So we have tons of um, graphs and report cards uh, that highlight the number of unique users, the number of uploaders, the number of editors on mobile and desktop. Um, all kinds of things are available to you guys um, if you just want to see at a high level you know, how your project is doing um, and, and how it can be made better. Um, so why is mobile important? Um, as Sue mentioned in her you know, um, it's growing very rapidly. Um, and at the rate that it's growing, we can predict that by next year, uh, about 30% of our reader traffic will come from mobile. And who knows what it'll be like in three years. It may very well surpass desktop traffic. Um, and also the rise of tablets, um, a huge thing. <coughs> uh, tablets make it much easier for anybody, anywhere to edit. Um, so phones are still kind of tricky uh, and, and hard to use for very advanced, sophisticated editing activities, but tablets, um, very, very possible uh, to edit on um, as, a, as power users do already. Um, so I've, I've been talking to a lot of mobile editors, and some of the big kind of overarching narratives that I've heard from these people um, are that uh, unlike desktop editing, which tends to happen sort of during the workday when you're on your computer, maybe you're bored at your desktop, um, mobile editing kind of happens anywhere and everywhere. So um, a lot of it happens after work when you're kind of peeking back in front of the TV with your tablet or your phone, uh, or when you're sort of on the go, when you're on the bus, on the train, during your commute. Um, and the relationship to editing is pretty different. So desktop editing, um, a lot of the power users that edit on desktop say that, you know, I, I sit down to my computer and I plan to write an article and I get out all my sources and, you know, it's, it's a planned activity with a certain time box. Mobile editing is very different from that. It's, um, it tends to happen in shorter bursts. Um, and, and people say it's more of a spontaneous thing, like they're out in the wild um, looking up something on their phone and they notice a mistake and they can correct it right there on um, the mobile editor. So yeah, the horse coming. Um, so yeah, we've created this mobile site, which is, um, we think it's a horse, a wooden horse. It's full of a lot of people and they've been wheeled into the big city of Troy, which is Wikipedia. Um, and these users, they know very little about Village Pump and talk pages and who knows what this is going to do. So we need to like learn new behaviors, I think, of educating these users and nurturing them. And we'd be really like, we'd really welcome any kind of ideas around them. Because um, so far we're seeing very like promising and constructive edits from these users. They're not vandalizing generally. They're not, there are a few, but the majority are making some good quality edits. Um, and this graph shows that this is quite, um, quite constant, so we're getting 500 unique editors a day at the um, So yeah, we're kind of at the point now where we have um, contributory feature parity with desktop. Um, all the things you might expect to do on desktop that are bare minimum are now on mobile. Um, we have talk and notifications currently on our beta site, which I'll talk about later, which is like an experimentation ground that anyone can use. Um, so those are going to go up very, very soon. Um, and we've actually gone beyond feature parity, but here's a picture of what kind of events the wiki um, modeling nearby, which is one of the features we pushed out this year, this year, um, this year. Um, and when we pushed out to mobile, the response was very positive, and we had a lot of uh, Wikipedians saying, why doesn't this work on desktop? And we actually put that on desktop, so that's the first feature that's on mobile first, and then straight to desktop. Um, so there's a lot of potential here. Um, you know, mobile editors could outnumber desktop editors in the future. We have to bear that in mind. Um, and you, we've got to remember that they could inject life into a lot of our smaller projects. We have a lot of smaller projects with a lot of smaller articles, lower amounts of editors. If there's a significantly like, a large number of editors on mobile for those projects, they, they could overtake desktop. Um, we could see interest in new workflows and different, different new written projects as well. And we're also thinking a lot about design. So last year, Brandon Harris did a presentation about what Wikipedia might be in 2015. He called it Athena. Um, and this is something we're thinking about a lot on mobile. We're very closely with designers to make sure everything we, we design can scale up to desktop. Um, so this is 
if you view the mobile site in your desktop browser, this is on the, the screenshot on the right is what you'll see. Um, on the left is Athena, what Brandon envisioned. And you can see quite a few similarities there, and it doesn't take much to think of this becoming that. Um, so yeah, Wikipedia has issues. One of the funny things that happened this year was we started a Twitter and Tumblr meme. Um, so when we cleaned up cleanup templates, we added a little statement on the top of the article saying this page has some issues. And a lot of people were noticing this, um, and they were like, happily tweeting about it and saying, you know, the Pope has issues, Mold has issues, the Coalition for Marriage has issues, the Pope has issues, the English for Trouble Football has issues. Um, this is promising because it shows people are noticing this um, more than when it was like a, a list of um, tables that were taken up the entire page. Uh, and if we can just make these actionable, that's the way people could potentially contribute um, much clearer. Um, so really we encourage you to think mobile. Um, what we've noticed is a lot of Wikipedians, like a lot of power users, don't really care about mobile. They say, edit on desktop, I'm never going to edit on mobile. Um, but we need people to care about this because we are going to get new users um, through this. Um, so we really encourage you to help us like in the development process, um, to provide us feedback. We're still getting to the point where we're releasing new features and it comes to surprise for Wikipedians, even though we've been experimenting with it for say one or two months on our beta site. Um, so if you go to this URL, I'll take you to the settings page. You can also access it from the top left icon on the mobile screen, which looks a bit like a hamburger. Um, if you click on the settings page, there's a button that says um, beta. So join the beta and you'll, you'll get new features before everyone else and you'll be able to respond to those quicker and there'll be less surprises. Another thing you can do is install this Chrome extension and take the mobile challenge. Um, so if you are using desktop, I encourage you to install this Chrome extension which will redirect you to the mobile site every time you put a Wikipedia page. Um, so we really like value like understanding what kind of things you miss. And you don't have to do it for long, maybe like a day, a week, um, and just see what features you really miss and find yourself switching back to desktop. So we need to get those features working. Um, we'd also like you to code mobile. Like currently we get like a very embarrassing amount of contributions from volunteers. Um, and there's a lot of exciting stuff going on here. This year there's, there's a kind of wish list of things we'd love to work on, but we maybe don't have the bandwidth to do so. Things like visual editor on tablets is one thing we're thinking about. Um, doing more work on Echo, um, Flow, user profiles, Ajax page loan, other um, performance improvements, um, and article drafts, all kind of ideas that would be really great on a mobile context. For instance, drafts, you can imagine them being extremely useful to make notes while you're out and about, but not necessarily committing to writing an article. Um, so we have various ways you can feedback to us. Um, you can contact us on Twitter, IFC, email. Um, the slides will be available at the end, so if you need any of these things, you can link to worry about writing down quickly now. Um, so thank you. Um, thanks so the channel name is actually wrong. It is? Oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> Wikipedia, maybe. Dash. 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 So I'm wondering if you guys have other things in that sort of direction that you're planning to try and take advantage of. Um, yeah, actually, so um, there's a lot of stuff in the Wikipedia colon backlog section um, on English Wikipedia and a few other projects. Um, this is just a, like a generic um, space where cleanup tasks are kind of aggregated. Um, and a lot of those tasks are pretty simple to envision as mobile touch interface um, kind of uh, experiences um, that could actually be really fun and, and sort of gamified. Um, one example is um, disambiguation solving. So uh, the desktop has a feature called the dab solver, which a lot of people use and a lot of people love. It's just a quick, easy way to kind of blast through a bunch of disambiguation fixes. Um, and this is one thing that we've been thinking about um, turning into a kind of a mobile game, mobile app, mobile site feature. Um, so yes, definitely. I think there's a lot of uh, room to experiment with that kind of um, not free-form text input, but um, but other kinds of contributions along the line. Um, so, are there any plans to take um, the mobile extension and possibly merge it into core? It's it's mostly kind of like a skidding and and um, and 
kind of uh, filtering the system almost, then maybe have some other, well, some way to actually change the way it looks so that third party users can have different looking mobile sites when they use the extension. So you're specifically asking for customizations to the skin and like playing in more with like how this um, desktop skin works? Well, yeah, so basically every new wiki site on the internet looks like Wikipedia, mm -hmm. and that's both kind of a nice thing and also not a very good thing. Um, so uh, there's a number of ones that have, are making their own skin, but our skin existing isn't very good. So, um, but the mobile extension is very nice, but they would make, like to make it look like their site. So yeah. So, so currently we do the same thing as um, as desktop, which we have like a special page, uh, a special media wiki page called media wiki um, uh, mobile.css. So people can apply their own CSS customizations. Um, we're really interested in doing basic things like um, changing the color theme um, by just switching out a value um, for, a, um, for a color. Um, that would be really interesting. Also, you can plug your own skin into mobile front end. And you'll be able to use all the mobile front end features like mobile detection, but you will uh, use them with your own skin. But generally, we're trying like to write. You're right. <laughs> Generally, we're trying to like make uh, mobile much more, um, like much more core. So we're hoping that in the future, like mobile, will just be like a few extra additions, to, um, potentially just the skin itself. So that'd be the great thing. Any other questions? Uh, I kind of want to use this uh, gathering to talk about one thing. I've met 15 people at the conference that don't even know that. I, I mean, the 15 people I've talked to don't even know that all these features exist on the mobile web for Wikipedia and you know this is kind of like a, a small part of the community and I'm just wondering if people have ideas about how can we socialize the fact that the mobile web for Wikipedia has all these really great contributory features uh, we're not investing in the native app right now and so we want you know we want people to be aware of this so that they can use it and give us feedback and help us build more um, and so I don't want to get into a conversation but if you guys have ideas you know, talk to us after this or find us on our talk pages or Twitter or whatever. Uh, but share your ideas with us. Actually, one quick question. How many people here use the Wikipedia mobile site? Okay. How many people use the um, an app for iOS or Android? Just checking. Thanks. And I have interest, how many people switch to desktop view on the mobile site? Uh, can we ask why? Like, what features of it that you missed that you just have to use? Top pages, top pages, diffs, history. So mobile has diffs. Not no, no. Changes. You don't find some changes in mobile, and I'm really interested to see it because my knowledge is the most of the time having some recent changes. Or you can see it, or you can just revert it at the time, but you don't see it in mobile app. So like if we were to build one like editor feature next, like out of interest, what would people want? Like put your hands up if you don't want recent changes. Put your hands up if you'd want um, four pages. <laughs> if we build those two things, would you like stop using the desktop version and like, show hands up intro? <laughs> 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 yeah, interesting. <laughs> Thanks. I really want to more, but I can so I can't hear you. You mentioned that you switched off Java. Switched off JavaScript, yeah. yeah. When, when I'm editing on my tablet, I have to uh, go into my uh, browser settings and disable Java. Otherwise, I can't, add, so I can't uh, link on my watch list or uh, uh, page history. If you like. So it takes forever. It takes So I think the question was, um, um, this this man at the back, don't you know, sorry, um, he's using um, the history page on his tablet and he has issues with Java that he has to disable to make the page actually work. Um, I'll be just what kind of tablet is that? Uh, it's Samsung. Um, okay, it's an Android, right? Yeah, okay. Um, 
So I, I suspect you're using the desktop version of the mobile um, Wikipedia, um, simply because we haven't optimized that page for mobile. Um, but that's, um, this is exactly the reason why we've had to like rethink all of these things and um, ad um, adapt the code for mobile, because a lot of things are broken um, by default. Um, um, but yeah, so this year you, you might see, you hopefully see a different interface. We're hoping to redirect tablets to the mobile site. Um, but there's quite a few things we need to do before we do that, because obviously a, a lot of people are missing features like recent changes and um, talk pages. Um, and we're hoping to get visual editor in there as well. Surprisingly, I'm not, my question is not about visual editor at all. Um, I find it um, quite difficult to read like long discussion pages on mobile. Like if I read like you know village contact book on my phone and I, I try to just find a section, then um, section anchors in the URL sometimes work and sometimes don't. I don't have to deal with content so I can go to my section. And the the collapse, the um, class and class things for sections don't work until the page is loaded, which is really not a great experience if you're on a conference like that. Um, so like I mean I realize it's kind of ridiculous to have kind of like local support for BDT where there's like a but it's like, it doesn't really take very long Ideally, we'd solve this with flow, right? Ideally, we'd have a proper discussion system. Yeah, I, I agree. A, a follow up on the collapse for the link, or the collapse for the sections. If you expand a section, you click on a link, and then you get back, it's free collapse. And especially during the sessions, um, clicking on a link to read the description of the section, and then like going back completely for the sessions here, I completely not find the sessions back. I have to go scroll back through and yeah. Yeah, because everyone's using work, everyone. At least apparently Ryan and I are using our using the scheduling page on mobile. Not for me as a point of view. I'm totally not involved in doing that. That's such a great idea. Yeah. I I just vote for that. No, I think originally when you um opened a section, um it would update the hash so when the you went to when navigate to when it came back it would take you back to But we always had people complain saying the as a result of this, uh, if they open lots of sections, if they click back, they toggle back to the sections they were before. So we never quite worked out what the preferred behavior was for them. Uh, maybe it's just the last section, but you know, this is the sort of thing that's really useful to us. So I really encourage you guys to raise bugs. If there's anything that you feel like is wrong, we can at least be aware of that. If your question is why are you telling me this now, even though you are also in San Francisco, it's because we're moving up the schedule. Yeah, so I went to the uh, OS 9 and workshop yesterday, and uh, the community has a ton of interesting technology and public ideas that we can treat with their uh, uh, just idea that there are like different uh, editors, like Tater, different styles of uh, editing on uh, interfacing with the mobile interfaces. Um, but also this idea of a different feature that allows you to discover people editing near you or people editing objects near you. And I know that we do some talk the idea of Articles and issues near you, but not really of, uh, uh, as far as I know, users who had any problems near you. And I'm wondering if you guys have any thoughts about uh, this potential uh, pressure here. Um, so, I mean, there are a few privacy concerns with this. Um, a lot of people don't like people to know where they're editing from. Um, so, I'm not saying the location of uh, editors, but the location of articles. Oh, the actual article. Um, yes, potentially we could imagine. Um, uh, Rethinking some of like, our nearby feature, for instance, we can imagine showing on that like people are editing this article now, why not join them? Um, but we need to make that kind of call to action clear. What does that look like? If someone's editing a page, is there a way we can um, allow them to edit together? I know that it's been like, you know, like they're looking a long way away, but the group rates that have like um, real time editing between groups of people and be able to have wiki, part, wiki editing parties where people contribute together. So that's an article. Um, in theory, there's no, there's no kind of problem with being able to do that, it's just a case of whether it's the right thing to do and um, you know, how the user experience is done. Do you find that you're getting the kind of uh, really intense criticism and uh, anger directed at you <laughs> when you make changes? Is that the best top they will get when they make changes? Are you operating in a freer environment when that sort of thing because you're in this? So the question was, <clears throat> do we get the kind of hatred and, and, and bile um, that a lot of desktop change uh, gets? 
And the answer is absolutely not. We, unfortunately, it would actually be nice to have more anger because at least it would mean that you know more people are paying attention. I think right now we're getting a lot of just silence, uh, which is unfortunate. It would be really nice to get any kind of feedback, even negative feedback. You know, it's, it still has value. So yeah, be, be angrier at us, please. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> if that's what you really want. <coughs> so I've been on school with time but apparently, so um, if anyone wants to grab this afterwards and talk, that'd be really great. Um, I'm after you, you can take as long as you want. Okay, all right, okay. <laughs> going to ask one more question. <laughs> uh, so, so right now when I use the mobile website, it's very, it's awesome, I totally love it. Um, but the way I do things is very desktop-like in the sense that I click things all the time. I just like tap them or push buttons and things, and then the page loads and I do the next thing. Um, has the mobile team thought more about incorporating like more gestural controls of mobile actions into the mobile website? And is, is that a limitation of the mobile web versus apps? Um, so this is something we can definitely do. Um, obviously, this would only be for more modern um, mobile devices, so things like iPhone and Android. Um, the main problem with using gestures is, is simply like, um, are those gestures discoverable? Are they obvious? Um, and also, once you've like added one gesture, you've got to be careful um, because people could expect that gesture in other places and it might become confusing. Um, so I think we haven't rushed into doing that, but I mean things like. Um, for instance, the left menu, I've seen a lot of people swipe their fingers to close it, and at the moment we don't support that. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of hanging fruit there, which seems pretty obvious, and it'd be nice to start doing that. There's also an inherent danger when you're doing gestures in old apps, and you might place gestures in a native. So there was this thing I was heard about weeks ago, there's an awesome example of what's side you use side to side swipe to yeah. navigate between yeah. pages. Well, it's also on the Android browser, you use to navigate between tabs and your screen. Yeah, but there's there's also stuff that pretty much everybody knows now, like hold the refresh. That we can oh, yeah. oh yeah, oh like yeah, yeah. That, that's that's watch list and stuff. Yeah, yeah. We actually have on our, so we have an uploads page on mobile which shows you all the uploads you've recently uploaded. Um, so I encourage you to check that out. Um, just, it's, it's quite nice to look up for instance. I've contributed all these things. Um, but if you scroll down that list, it actually updates as you go down the list. Um, so that click on your link. So we're starting to think about that. Anyway, thanks a lot, guys, for being on the I wish I had time to do this, but I was going back in line to try your mom. Craig, and I was referring to you. Do you have a minute? That's a We're going, uh, I'm going off to uh, Chinese Wikipedia's thing. To go get yelled at. Well, no, no, I, I think I've already alleviated this concern. That's a good, I mean, uh, I almost spoke with you. Thank you. Um, I don't think so. I think I can get like a 44% of this help. 44%? Oh, okay. Um, but, um, I just want to set up a menu in order to do my presentation. Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem. You want to plug into this thing? Yeah, yeah, I can. John, are you going to Eric's talk? Are you going to Eric's talk next? Um, yeah, why not? Oh,